Test, test. Hey. Hey. I'm sorry, I got caught there at the back socializing and fellowshipping. Um, so anyway, today's a wonderful day, beautiful day inside, and we're so excited that it's so pretty in here. And um, we're believing that, uh, that uh, it's going to continue to hold off the rain, and at 4.30 today, I'm going to jump out of an airplane, so we're going to have a good time with that, just to be safe. I wore a, a, a suit coat for my last day, uh, and we're having the last supper, just in case, so we're going to uh, enjoy that. Um, they're going to talk about it at the announcements, but just in case you, you, you don't get a chance to hear it, if you'll go down 133 all the way down in, into, into Long Beach and take Long Beach Road to, to, to turn on Long Beach Road, um, you, you'll be right there at the airport, and that's where we'll be at, at, at um, uh, Carolina Skydiving. So it's about 40, 40 minutes from here, 45 minutes from here. So, And then after it's over, we'll go out. We'll all go eat somewhere, so anybody wants to go, we'll have a great time. And uh, so, uh, God bless. So, but right now, we're going to get into our service. We had an incredible, and it's just the sweetest spirit in the first service today. And we're looking forward to God continuing to move in this service as well. So, we want God to bless you. Um, watch this video, and we'll get started. Stand and let's exalt and praise his name together. All that you've done for me 
Yeah. 
so good to us. Now is your chance to thank him by worshiping with your offering, your tithes. We are looking at the next phase of kingdom life, which means moving out of this building into a bigger, nicer facility, hopefully in a better part of town as well. We have a plan. God has a plan. Let me rephrase that. God has a plan for this church, and our ability to move to that next phase is dependent on your obedience and your tithes and offerings and whatever you're able to give above and beyond that. As the ushers come, we're going to pray that that happens. Lord, keep us forever in your plan for this church, Lord. You've blessed us so. You've brought us thus far. And Lord, you have given us a vision. May our people grasp that vision and come on board with us now with their finances and take this money that we receive today, multiply it, and bless the hands that use it. In your name we pray. Amen visiting today, please fill out a guest card on the back of one of the chairs and turn it in to guest services for a free Chick-fil-A gift card that you can use six days of the week. Reset meets every Wednesday. That is our teen life group at 7 o'clock right here at the church. And Life 101 has been a wonderful meeting. It started as a a way to encourage and share the beliefs of our church with newcomers and maybe new to the faith, but it's become such a mixture of, uh, of seasoned Christians, and what a discussion that comes every Tuesday at 7. Everyone is welcome to be a part of that. Today, it'll be raining men, or man, <laughs> as Pastor Doug jumps at four, well, at 4.30 is when we're going to meet. If you uh, go all the way down 133, take a right on Long Beach Road. It's uh, on the directions are on the sheet, but it's, uh, it's 4019, I believe, is the correct address of where you need to be to watch uh, Pastor Doug. What if, he does, what, what if he doesn't come down? What if he jumps out? <laughs> and where do he, where do he, where, oh, oh, and then we start rising to meet him, huh? Huh? Would that be great? be awesome. You don't want to miss that, do you? Be there today. Now, if it's cloudy, they won't let him do it. Rain, he said, not so much the problem, but if it's clouds, <laughs> they, won't, they won't let him jump, so we'll see. <laughs> Men's Life Group, we are going fishing on the pontoon boat with Rafers and working hard on that thing. Is it floating yet? Is it update? Okay. What? Well, couple more holes to plug and we're ready. Uh, August 18th, we're going to meet at 10.30 or 9.30. All right. And uh, you can find out more details, see Rayford or our guest services. Oasis and Dolores, I want to tell you the first service, I don't know, I'm, I'm glad you're here today to defend yourself in this service. Somebody said that that uh, El Cazador stands for the crazy Dolores in Mexican. I don't know who, who said that, but uh, meet at 4.30. We're going to meet in the Food Lion Shopping Center. Tough parking down there sometimes. So uh, meet at the Food Lion in Carolina Beach. We'll go to the restaurant for Mexican and then to Brit's Donuts afterwards. It's going to be a good time. And the Ladies Life Group, they're going to take the, uh, the fish that we men catch and make fish tacos 
Actually, uh, we don't know what Debbie's fixing, but we know it's going to be good at Debbie Neal's house, the Mexican feast, at 630. If you are a greeter, or if you are interested in being a greeter, you are urged to be here August 21st. That's at 7 p.m. right here at the church. We are so excited. Hope you've been checking out 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 10. For those who may be concerned, you won't be doing any laundry. You won't be folding any clothes. You'll just be making connections with people. We are going to pay for people's laundry at the laundromat. Just going to give them, pump the coins into the, and, and strike up a conversation with them. That's all you got to do. We're not going to preach. We urge you not to. We just want to share. We, we want to pay for your laundry today. And then if you get a chance to strike a conversation with them, tell them where you're from, tell them why you're doing this, know why you're doing this. Again, 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 10. For those of us who have been cleaned, we want to share that. Back to church Sunday, September 16th. If you're not here today, come back September 16th. Wait a minute. Uh, if you know someone who's not here, who hadn't been here in a while, let them know that they definitely need to come back September 16th as we celebrate Back to Church Sunday. Would you? What's that? Oh, the, oh yeah, the video. I was, as I was about to say, would you watch this video? <laughs> hey, what's up, everybody? My name is Steve, and I'm here with my friend Josh. Hello. And we are here to tell you all about Back to Church Sunday. It's going to be awesome, and we are so thrilled about it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, actually, I've been thinking a lot about it, and I have a friend of mine who I just can't wait to invite. Josh, how about you? No, I won't be doing that again. Nope, not this time. Wait, you're not invited? No, last time I invited someone, it was a very traumatic experience, uh, traumatizing, if you will. I can't go down that path again. Seriously? You had a bad experience? Last time I invited somebody to church, they, uh, they pulled a knife on me, so can't do it again. That was a foam sword. At a pirate-themed birthday party. <laughs> Your son's pirate-themed birthday party. Army matey, it was a traumatic experience. I can still see the guy lifting up his eye patch and giving me that look of, why are you asking me this, and where are the forks for the cake? And I'm not even sure if the guy heard me asking to church, so no thank you. We just gotta try again, man. There's gotta be someone you know you can invite. All right, there's somebody I know. Steve, do you wanna, do you wanna go? <laughs> okay, well, I'm already gonna be there, so I don't think that's really the point Great. all this. Great, fail just like with the pirate guy. Stab me again, Steve. No, stop, look, there's gotta be somebody you can invite. Okay, but hang on. with me on this one. This is like plan E, okay? Okay, gotcha. This is my cat Pebbles. I'm gonna invite him. <laughs> Actually, I don't think inviting pets to a church is a great idea. No, 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 Pebbles needs God, okay? I mean, it's like, it doesn't even care that we have a kitty litter box. Please, please. <laughs> no. Let's not bring cats to the church. Back to the drawing board, Pebbles. Okay, well, whoever you are inviting, make plans to invite them too. Back to church Sunday. We'll be cheering for you. Yes, we will. You can do it! Oh, Pebbles, oh, it's going. <laughs> would you stand with us? How many of you would bring your cat to church if they let you, huh? All dogs <laughs> go to heaven. I'm not sure about cats. <laughs> Maybe they should come. We don't need nine lives. We have two that count. Our life on this earth and the one that we'll receive after we pass away. On the day that death surrendered to the mighty cross of Jesus Christ, the earth would shake beneath the weight of darkened skies. And on his brow, a crown of sorrow.
chased down my heart through all of my failure and pride. On a hill you created the light of the world, abandoned in darkness to die. And as you challenge you to go home and look up the song so will I and look at the words to it that is there's some incredibly deep meaningful thoughtful incredible words there and that and that uh and that song there and I encourage you to go go home and uh look those up because that's that's not just a song it's just not got words to it that don't really mean a lot I'm telling you there's some powerful stuff in there so will I I'm looking forward today to speaking with you about uh, a message that I'm just titling, uh, The Cutting Edge. The Cutting Edge. Um, there's a cutting edge on a lot of things. And, and you know, if you, have you ever had a, a, a set of keys and, and one, the key that you had was the right key? Um, and you put it in the right door and you turn and it, and it, didn't, didn't, go, it didn't open the door because of the fact that when you, when you turned it, that the, you used it so much that the edges didn't get, are, are not sharp anymore and it kind of slips in there on, under the key keychain in there well that, that's what I'm talking about I want to talk to you today about that about that cutting edge right there but I'm actually going to talk to you not about keys but but about uh, an axe where the Bible talks about an axe and this is not an axe it's a hatchet but it's going to work for today um, I didn't want to bring a big old sledgehammer action here today but I want to read from you in 2nd Kings chapter 6 verses 1 through 7 2nd Kings chapter 6 verses 1 through 7 the company of the prophets, and, and, and another version says, the sons of the prophets, um, said to Elisha, Look to the place where we meet. Look, the place with, um, where we meet with you is too small for us. Well, see, they got the same problem we do. It's too small. You know, and, and, and you know, we're, we're, at, we're at two services, and we thank you so much for giving. If you, want to, if you really want to give to, to our building fund, or, or, you, know, you can just type building fund or go directly to that account. Or you can just continue to give above and beyond your tithes, and it's such a blessing. Um, but we're trying to get a bigger place. We're at a place where our parking is inadequate, and, uh, and we just can't fit everybody in here in one service. And, and, and then sometimes in the second service, we can't fit everybody. Um, so we want you to, to continue to know that. But it, it's funny that they're talking about this in the Scripture. And Elisha had just come from watch, uh, um, watching Elijah run away in, in a chariot of fire, and he left Elisha behind to, to, to carry on his mantle, to, co to continue on. You know, um, Elisha is the one who got the double portion of Elijah. And so we're sitting here, and these sons of the prophets are saying, hey, this place is too small. We, we're growing, and we got to do something different. Something's got to change, okay, just like us. And it says, let each one of us go to the Jordan, which is a, a muddy, muddy, dirty, kind of nasty type of a river. And it says, let each one of us get a pole, and let's build a place there for us to live. Okay, I'm not going to ask everybody to get a pole and let's go build something. Okay, we're just going to let somebody else handle that at that point in time when we're ready to, to, to build. But, so it says, let us let's get, get a place there to, for us to live and go. And he said, go. Then one of them said, won't you please come with your servants 
I will, said Elisha. And as he went with them, and he went with them, excuse me. And they went to the Jordan and began cutting down trees. And as one of them cut down a tree, the, um, the iron axe head fell into the water. Oh, my Lord, he cried out. It, it was borrowed. You see, he's sitting there saying, oh, my gosh, you know, it's not just my axe head. This is somebody else's axe head. I borrowed it, and now I've lost it, and now I'm in trouble. So he lost it. And so then the man of God, Elisha, said, well, where did it fall? Where did you lose it? And when he showed him the place, he said, there it is. I, I lost it right here. Um, Elisha cut a stick and threw it in and made the iron float. <coughs> and he said, lift it out. Then the man reached in his hand and took, took it out of the water. So I, I want to tell you a quick story about some lumberjacks talking about some, some, some uh, hatchets and some axes. There was, there was these two, two lumberjacks that were having a competition. One was a big man, and he worked out a lot. He was pretty strong. He had big arms, and he was pretty jacked. And, and he was a great lumberjack and one of the best ones in the world. And, and they were going to have a, a competition of who can cut down the most trees in an hour. And so this guy, he said, I want somebody to challenge. And, and there was somebody in the competition that was a smaller guy. He, I mean, he was kind of scrawny, scrawny compared to this guy anyway. He was not like, like didn't have any muscles but, because he was a lumberjack, but he was a whole lot smaller than this dude. And so he's like, man, I'm going to destroy you, man. There's no way you're going to beat me. And so they get up there, and they get their axes, and they start to get set go, and they start whacking away. They just start really going at it, just, just, just tearing it up. And, and everybody's, everybody's cheering them on, and they're yelling, and this big dude is just going at it, just whacking trees down. And the smaller dude, he's whacking trees down, but then after 15 minutes, he, he says, I'll be right back, and he leaves. And then he comes back, and he starts cutting down some more trees. And he left, and the big dude was like, dude, I've got you, man. You're, I'm going to destroy you. You're taking breaks. You're tired already? I'm, I'm not even going to stop. I'm going to keep right on going. I don't need to stop. i got enough wind. I can keep going with this right here. And at the very end, they, they, they cut him down, and, and they, they, they sit there, and, and then the judge came out and said, you know, let's look and see who did the most. And he looked, and he said, you know what? The, uh, the scrawny guy, he, he's, he's got two more trees than you do, three more trees than you do. He said, how is that possible? I'm big and I'm strong, and, and, I, and I didn't even need a break. I kept going. I kept fighting. I kept cutting. And he kept taking breaks. And he said, he said, he said sir, 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 I, I, I wasn't taking breaks. He said, well, what were you doing? He said, every time I left, I left, and I was sharpening my axe. So you see what happened there? So this other guy would just keep going, and he kept going, and his axe got more dull and more dull. So at the end, he was still going. But it wasn't as sharp, so it took more to cut down. This guy kept leaving and sharpening his axe up, and when he came back, it stayed sharp, and he was whacking, and every whack count, every time counted, every time he, he cut something, it came down. And so he won because of that. And see, today, yes, um, you know, I, I, I'm always preaching to the broken and the hurt and the, the guilty and the shame and the outcast. And if you're here today, we're going to definitely minister to you. We want to we want to bless you and touch you. And if you're online, we want to minister to you. But today's message is also something that 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 I don't normally talk to a whole lot, and that's just God's people. As far as I'm doing good, I'm fine. Everything's good. I'm working hard. I'm in the church. I'm working hard. I don't. I, I, I work all the time. I do all kind of things for God. I'm on, the, I'm on the worship team, I'm on, I'm on, I'm on the greeter team, I'm on the ushers, I'm, I'm working, I'm doing all this stuff. But see, I want to talk to you about how us as p individuals, us as Christians, how we can lose sight of our first love. I want to split this into two parts. The first part is the kind of people um, that this happens to, and then the second part is um, how to recover your cutting edge. The first part is the kind of people that this happens to. I want to talk about that. You know, well, these people were sons of prophets okay so they weren't novices they weren't sinners they weren't out there doing bad things they were actually in school they were like hey we're growing we need a bigger place to live we are sons of prophets we want to be prophets we're, we're in theology school we, we go to life groups we do all this stuff we're doing all the right things we're doing what God asked us to do you know they, and you know so they were doing the right things they were sons of prophets they had spiritual growth and they had vision hey we need a bigger place this place isn't big enough for us so they had vision they had dreams they had thoughts of what's going on they were they were very human they were very humble they had a lot of humility they looked at Elisha and said Elisha we don't want to go on our we want you to go with us and help us and we need a leader we don't want to just you know think that we know what we're doing because we don't we're still learning we're still training help us go with us so you know, if you look at that whole scripture right there, the point is, is that, that, that this happened 
to good, solid Christian people. This happened to good people. So what does that mean? It means, you know what? It can happen to any of us. It happens to Billy Graham. It, ha it happens to, to you know, any, anybody, whoever you may be. It happens to me. I, I daily have to sharpen my axe. Daily. I have to keep taking breaks and do that. I was share, sharing a busy week that I had. A, you know, I was down at the celebration services that we had on the main campus of Chesapeake, and it was a wonderful time. But I had, because I was down there, and I don't get to go down there very much, when I'm down there, I have meetings all day with people down there. And so I, I had a meeting from like 9 o'clock to 3 o'clock every day. I left, went to the motel, changed my clothes, got back by 6. Service was over around 8.30 or 9. And then we, we went out to eat till about 11. I went back to the motel, sat there and relaxed for a few minutes, went to sleep and started the day over Monday through Thursday. Okay, so then Thursday morning came, it was time for me to go home. Okay, and I knew when I got home, I was going to go straight from Chesapeake, straight to the church because we had a kids crusade that night and I wanted to support our children. And so I didn't even go home. I came straight, straight here, you know. And, and so then I had, had that. Then the next morning I had to get up and I had a counseling session. And, um, and then that, that um, and also that afternoon and then that night we had the kids crusade again. And then the next morning I had a counseling session. Then I had to go all the way to, to Magnolia, Magnolia, North Carolina, uh, about an hour away for a friend's funeral. Um, and then uh, I, had a, I stayed there in line. I was there 10 minutes and I gave, I gave my blessings to, 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 to my, family, my friends down there. And then I turned around and drove an hour back. Okay, and then I had another counseling session, and then, then last night I sp spent a little bit of time with my family. So that, that was a busy time, okay? So all that made me dull, right? So, so because I was constantly going, constantly going, but I love that. You know, people often ask me, Pastor Doug said, you know, I, I don't want to bother you, but no, no, you don't bother me. You bother me when you don't bother me. I, I want to know. I want to know when you're in the hospital. I want to know when you're sick. I want to be there. I want to help you. I want to do things. I want to go to, I, I, to things. I, I love that. I, I, I enjoy being bothered because that's my gift. That's my love encouragement. So, so I had to think, okay, if I go through this whole process, I'm going to stand up the Sunday morning and be like, okay, God, you got to talk to me about something because I ain't even had no time to study nothing because there was no time. So what did I do? Thursday morning, I decided, you know what? I'm going to sharpen my iron a little bit right now, and I'm going to stay here in my, in my motel room before I, instead of going home to be with my family and everything, I'm going to stay, stay right here, and I'm going to stay in bed, and, and, about, and, and, and about for the next three to four hours, I'm just going to sit here, and I'm going to study, and I'm going to get all my messages together, get it prepared, and then when I get home Thursday night late, I'll stay up a little bit and, and sharpen a little bit. Friday, Friday, I'll sharpen a little bit. Saturday morning, I'll sharpen a little bit. Saturday night, I'll sharpen a little bit, and Sunday morning, I'll preach it, and I'll, I'll Sunday before service. And so I had some time to sharpen, I felt like, but I didn't have time to really cut down anything. Okay? And so that happens, and, and, and we have to plan for that because we as good Christians, me as a pastor, if I just keep going, and you know, we just keep going, I'm, I'm going to this, you're going, you're going to this, you're going to that, you're, 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 you're just busy, 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 busy. See, the devil would love to keep you so busy, so, so busy, that you were so busy doing everything, you had no time to, to, to help yourself. Okay? And he would, he would love that. And, and see, we have to keep ourselves sharp. There are no Ginsu Knives Christians. You remember the Ginsu Knives? For $19.99, you can get a Ginsu Knives and you never have to sharpen it. And if you buy within the next 30 minutes, you get a whole other set for free. And if you order right now, you get a juicer for free. But the whole point was is that the Ginsu Knives never have to be sharpened. There are no Christians there are zero Christians in this world except for the one man of God that walked Jesus himself that did never have to be sharpened. And he still had to say, you know what? I got to go and pray. So even Jesus himself had to find time to sharpen himself because he was 100% he was human and 100% God. As God, he didn't need sharpening. He is a sharpener. But he walked as a human and he said, I got to get sharpened. I need some strength. I need some hope. I need some help. So the first thing was, was what type of people need this? The second thing is, is how to recover from it. So you got to, first off, you got to admit that you have a spiritual ax. And that, 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 you know, this guy here said, you know, I borrowed it. I lost it. I was like, and, it and it's borrowed. You know, you know you, we got we to look at ourselves and say, you know what? I, I, I'm responsible for my own ax sharpening. Yes, I can, I, 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 on my way home yesterday, I to a couple podcasts of some preachers just preaching just random stuff and and i loved it and it was great but i'm responsible for opening the bible myself and, and, and studying and, and trying to sharpen my my own axe i'm responsible for getting on my knees and praying and sharpening my axe i'm responsible for coming to church and saying god i, I want to closer my relationship with you 
We don't want that hand-me-down revelation to where we, we expect we're going to, we, well, my, my grandma was anointed, my mom and dad was anointed, and my wife's anointed, so I'm just going to kind of feed off of them. We don't want that kind of apathy relationship with God where we, where we, where we get it from someone else. Verse 6 said, said that, that when the man of God asked, where, where, um, where did it fall? See, he, he immediately said, where, he said, where did it fall? He said, it fell right there. And he, so right away, he accepted responsibility. Hey, I lost my axe head. I lost my axe head. It was borrowed. I lost it, and I lost it right there. So when we, get, when we come before God and we lose our spiritual edge, we've got to go to God and say, God, I'm sorry. I accept responsibility. I've lost my edge, and, and I'm sorry for losing my edge. It's my fault, and here's where I lost it at, and I'm going to get it back. So he, said, so he said, where did you lose it? Where did you lose it? So let's talk a, minute, a few minutes real fast before we, we do some communion about, about where you can lose your, your edge at. Number, the first thing is, like I said a while ago, when you're busy or when you're tired. When you're constantly going, 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 you, you wear yourself down. You're very, you're very, very tired. You're very fatigued. And, and Charles Spurgeon says, when fatigue walks in, faith walks out. Have you, have, you ever, have you ever been so exhausted, you just come, you're exa- just totally physically exhausted, you know, and you walk in, you're like, hey, all I want to do is go to bed. I don't want to watch my favorite show, I don't want to talk to nobody, I'm just so physically exhausted, I just got to go to bed. You know, and in those, in those situations, at those times, you don't want to pray, you don't want to read your Bible, and th- in those times, it can be so easy that we get so caught up in working, being so busy, the devil would love you to be so busy in church that you have no time for God. And you lose your, your, your sharpness. You, you, you get dull. And it really affects us in a negative way. We lose it. We, and, and, and we get busy and we get tired. The second place, you know, is that, that uh, with, with the temptation with the first place is that we'll say, well, I'll, I'll study later. I'll, I'll, I'll read the Bible later. I'll talk to God later. And we always put him off. And we put him off so far. And then we realize, just like that lumberjack, oh, I'll take a break when I'm, when I'm done. When, when I'm done doing this, I'll take a break. And he just kept going, and his, his axe was dull. And after a while, you realize that if you keep right on slinging that axe, you, you, you're not in God's anointing no more. You're in your own anointing. And when you start walking around in your own anointing rather than what God's given you, then it's a dangerous thing. Because you're walking away, and you're walking around in a flesh anointing. You're walking around in something. It's not even an anointing. It's, a, it's just flesh. You're walking around in your own power. You're not walking around what God gave you. Okay, so the first thing is that, busy and tired. Number two is we forget the basics. You know, and I say often, I tell the discipleship class on, on Tuesday night, read your Bible. You need to pray. You need to have godly friends and need to be at church. And you're like, well, Pastor, that, that's, that's really basic. Well, you know what? So is putting gas in your car. But I've ran out of gas four times this year. <laughs> Why? Because I forgot the basics. You got to have gas to go. Because I was so busy, oh, I got five miles. Where I'm going is only two miles. So I'm going to go ahead and do that, then I'll get gas. Oh, my God, I got two miles left. Okay, so I'm just going to run on over here real fast. Oh, I'm going to be late for my appointment. I'm going to go. Okay, now it's at zero. I know that it says zero, but technically there's a little bit of gas left in the car right now. Okay, I go, oh, that gas station, they're trying to rip me off, so I'm going to pass that gas station to go get gas down there. Okay, I didn't sharpen myself. The same thing happens with God. I quit praying. I quit reading my Bible. The basics. There was a song written by, <coughs> by for him. <coughs> Excuse me. For him wrote a song called "The Basics of Life." When I was a, a young adult, and in the, the name of the, the song just says, "We need to get back to the base, the basics of life. A life that is pure and a love that is blind. A faith that is fervently grounded in Christ. A hope that endures for all times." And it's basically saying, man, we can't forget the basics. You got to read. You got to pray. You got to go to church. You can't, you know, we keep on saying, you know, and I used to love, this is just a little side note here. Whenever I was a youth pastor, you know, I, I would always jab at the kids sometimes. They're like, well, Pastor Doug, I had a long day at work and I'm tired. And I said, well, Jesus, I said, Jesus Christ was tired when he walked up that cow, that, that hill at Calvary. And he was whipped and he was bleeding and broken. And he still went for you even though he was tired. Can't you give him 30 minutes? <laughs> I had a good time with that. They're like, yes, sir, I'll be there. <laughs> so, so, but the basics, 
The three-legged stool. I always talk about when I'm doing discipleship, I talk about the three-legged stool. And the three-legged stool is time with God, time in the Word, and time with, God, time with godly friends and or church. And if those are the three things that you have to remember, the three basics. And sometimes we lose ourselves there, and we get dull there. And sometimes, we'll, if, you, if you chop one of those three off, kind of, uh, you know, one of those, those three-legged stools, if you chop one off an inch or two inches, three inches, how big that is, then you're going to be kind of wobbly, right? But if you, you know, if you chop off time with God, but then you chop off time with God and time in the Word, now you're, now you got three legs and you're only sitting on one. You're going to tumble, right? You've got, you've got to understand, you've got to keep the basics of life in there. If not, you'll lose your axe, you'll lose your sharpen. I don't care how good of a Christian you are, I don't care if you memorize the whole Word of God, you need to spend time there. I don't care if you're a prayer warrior and you pray, you've, you, you've always prayed, and you, you're the best, pray, best, best speaking prayer in, in the world, you need to spend time with God. I don't care if you've been a Christian 75,000 years, you still need to be at church and be at the corporate anointing of God. I love Facebook, but fa I, we do that for people who can't come, who are out of town, and people who are checking our church out and saying, hey, I want to be there. But, 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 but Facebook, you, we cannot sit at home and say, well, I'll just watch it on, on Facebook. That's good. But there's something about the corporate anointing of being together. Yes, you can see it. God can bless you and save you right where you're at. But there's something about being in this room together where God is moving and the power of God is here. And that's so important. And now this is a true story. Talking about the basics, this is a, a true story. A man named Ivan McGuire, he died at the age of, of 35. He didn't commit suicide. He didn't die of cancer or any kind of disease. He didn't die... Of, of, of a shooting ironically he died of skydiving he <laughs> he what happened was he had jumped 800 times he was a professional skydiver he was one of the best skydiving photographers there is and he was the best but one day he was getting ready to jump, and he was so excited about that day and what he was about to do, he jumped out of the airplane without his backpack. Okay, side note, I promise you I have my backpack on tonight. <laughs> There's no question I'm not going to forget that. Okay, and there's going to be a grown man on my back too. We're running in tandem, so, okay. But, but here's the thing, though. He got so excited and felt like he knew what he was doing, and he was doing so good. I'm such a professional that he forgot the basics. He forgot to grab the thing that saved his life. I got this. I've done it so much. I got this. And he didn't even think about, I need that. Number three, when we feel the drain and the long haul pressures of life, just when, just when life drains you, when things get rough, you're just going through a patch and, 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 and you, you, the work is pulling at you. Church is pulling at you. Your kids are pulling at you. Your family's pulling at you. Your neighbors are pulling Everybody's pulling from you and it's just a drain and it just drains you and it pulls you down and, and you're trying to you're trying to, to spin 11 plates on your fingers and you only got 10 you're trying to juggle six ball, balls and you don't know how to juggle but five and you're 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 you're, 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 you're doing more than you can and that's why people burn out people burn out because they're not doing what God's called them to do I, I, I don't believe in burnout let me tell you why the only reason you will burn out is if you do if you're doing what God has not called you to do I have never known anybody that was doing what God called them to do, and they burned out. Because the Bible says that the call of God is irrevocable. It's always on your life. You may retire, but the call of God is still there. So if there was a way for you to burn out doing what God's called you to do, well then, hey. So if that happens, then what's happening is you're adding other things to what God's called you to do, and you're trying to do more than what God's called you to do, and you're trying to be Superman or Batgirl, and you're trying to do all this stuff, and, you're, and, you're, and, and it's wearing you down. But if we would just stick to what God calls us to do, we'll never get tired. We'll get tired physically, but you know what I mean. We'll never get tired of doing what God's called us to do. But the long drain of life. Number four, when we get hurt and disappointed. When someone takes your axe and stabs you in the back, it hurts. And it causes you to get depressed, to get down. Well, I'm not going to pick up my Bible. God's, God let it happen. I don't want to talk to him today. I'm not going to pray. God's not, I, th I thought God was going to help me. I don't feel peace right now. When that's the time we need to go to prayer. That's the time we need to go to God. 
God says, I work all things out for the good. There's a reason for everything that happens in our life. His ways are not our ways and his thoughts are not our thoughts. And we've got to realize and understand, God, you know best. You know what's going on. I trust you in my life and I'm going to come to you and keep my act sharp and not allow, allow disappointment and pain and depression to come on me and affect me. Number five, we have unconfessed sin. Unconfessed sin will, 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 will certainly dull your acts. Yes, there's grace, and, and you sin, and there's grace, there's the grace of God. But I'm talking about un, unconfessed sin, that, that, that if you don't have a repentant heart, and you don't repent for your sins, God's not going to say, God's grace is not greasy grace, where you just do whatever the heck you want to do, go ahead and sin, you're saved, so it's okay. God's, God does have grace, and God's, God, 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 the Bible says God's grace is bigger than your sins, but you can't stay in unconfessed sin. You have to walk around and say, God, I love, forgive me. God, I'm sorry. I have unconfessed sin in my life, and it's causing me to be spiritually dull, and I, I, I want help. I need your help. Number six, when we focus on the wrong audience, I love y'all. Y'all are amazing. Y'all are so precious in my heartbeat in church, and I love it, y'all. I love each and every one of you. Y'all are such a big deal to me. But when I come here today, every Sunday, I don't do it because of you. I do it because of him. Okay? I only... Play to the audience of one. Y'all are all here. And I'm playing, I'm playing to him and saying, God, I'm doing this for you. Now you bless them. But we decide that we want to be people pleasers. And we want to please everybody. And I know what it was. I know how it is. I've been a, pe a people pleaser most of my life. And I have people and, and pastors and everybody else that I tried so hard to please and was never able to do it. You can't please people. You just can't do it. And if your whole life is trying to people please and please people and make everybody happy and everybody do right and everybody understand what you really mean, well, I didn't really mean it that way. That's my, that wasn't my heart. This is, you're taking it wrong and, and you're just trying to constantly put out fires. And you're trying to be good enough for everybody else. And you're trying to perform and do things and act like, you know, hey, God, you know, and you're, you're getting duller and you're getting duller and you're getting duller. And God says, look, you're just performing to me because I'm telling you right now, you, you got the part. You've got the part. You don't have to perform to me. You, but you just go ahead and sing your praise to me and live for me, the audience of one. And then he said, then at the very end, he said, he looked at it. He said, you know what? I, my bus, I lost it. My, my axe flew off the handle. It's, it, I lost it. It's there. It's at the bottom of that mucky, miry, muddy Jordan, I, and I can't find it. You ever try to find something when you lost in the ocean or somewhere? You, you, you can't. I lost my, my, navy, my navy ring. I, I, I was throwing a football, and, and it was just a little bit too big for me. I just threw it right in the ocean with the football. And I went and looked for it. You, you just can't find it. After, after it goes under the water, it sucks it up, you know. And especially when it's muddy like that and miry, you just can't find it. But see, you got, you got to understand that, you know what, that this axe head responsibility is mine. I need my own axe head, and I need to be responsible for my axe head. You know, when it starts getting a little loose, if you're a man and you, you've ever done any kind of axing, you know when it gets, starts getting kind of loose and you see it starting to slip off, what do you always do? You bang it on the ground like that right there and get it set back down in there again. And you, you, you reset it. Don't let it go, get to where it flies off. Only you can sharpen that. It's good for revival. It's good, it's good to come to church. It's good to have podcasts. It's good to, to listen to ministries and stuff like that on, on the Internet and, and church and television and stuff. But you have to go to God yourself and get sharpened. You, can't, you, can't, you cannot sharpen yourself off of somebody else's anointing. Revelations 2, 4, and 5. This is what it boils down to. But I have this complaint against you. You don't love me or each other the way you first did. How far, look how far you've fallen. Turn back to me and do your first works again. Don't get to the place where you hear that from God. Look how far you, you were right here. You were on fire with Jesus. You loved Jesus. You were serving me. You were doing all the right things. And you got dull. And now look where you're at. We can stop it before we get there, but if we don't stop it, that's where we get to where we realize that we're not even, we're not even, we're, we're working for God and we're doing things for God, but we're not in love with God no more because we're so far away from it. It says, go back and do your first works again. What is your first works? Your time alone with God, communicating with God, reading, praying, like I said, church, all these things are important. Sacrifices to God, sacrificing things for God. You know, whenever, guys, whenever you were dating your girlfriend and you were young, teenager you would eat ramen noodle for a whole entire week to buy six roses for her 
You would, you would, you would not, you would not, your brothers are like, hey man, let's go see this basketball game, the school basketball game. You're like, I gotta go with my girlfriend, we're gonna watch a chick flick. And, and everybody, they laughed at you. But you took that and you sacrificed for your girl. That's what you wanted to do. You wanted to impress her. You would do whatever it took. You would sacrifice whatever it took to make sure she understood that she loved you and that she cared for you. And then, what happened? When you stopped loving her, or she stopped loving you, then what happened? You stopped paying the sacrifices. And that's what happens with God. When we stop sacrificing for God. That's where the Bible says, all things are permissible, but all things are not profitable. There's things that's legal. There's things that you can do that you're not going to go to hell over. But God's like, is that really good for you? Is that really going to help you come closer to me? That's not even really sin, but is it going to help you at all? Is it going to strengthen you? It's idle. You know? Do you really need to go watch that? Is, it, is, it, is that really going to help you? Time alone with God. I want to show you, because what happens is we get in this place where we get so, so you know, we start off excited for Jesus. When we first get saved, we're so excited. And slowly, slowly, it, something kind of happens. Let, let me show you a quick skit that will explain to you a visual of what happens. You're on fire with Jesus. You just get saved. And this is how it looks. Delight in the Lord, he will give you the desires of your heart. Huh. Okay, so like, if we're delighting in the Lord, I'm doing what he wants, I'm happy, and he's going to give me what I need. Huh. Well, <laughs> I never really thought of that before. That's, that's kind of cool. I can't answer that right now. <laughs> All right, I got to write this stuff down. And that's how it happens at the beginning. You're excited. You're on fire for Jesus. You're excited. You're on fire for Jesus. Pete, your friends are calling. You're like, man, I'm, I'm in the Word of God. This is good. This is better. I'll, I'll call you back later. I'm excited. Let me journal. Let me write this down. Let me talk. Let me, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me. I'm just excited about God. I, I just want to know about God. And, and you're all excited. And then after a little while, you, you start, things start happening in life and the drain of life. And all of a sudden, it may go like this. Right. Delight in the Lord, and He will give you the desires of your heart. Oh, it's, it's nine o'clock. Okay, uh, American Idol's on. Let's put that on in the background. Oh, oh, mm -mm. yeah. Uh, as uh, Simon Cowell would say, it's it's a no for me. Hello? Uh, well, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of kind of busy. What? Oh, in, in 15 minutes? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'll be, I'll be there. So you see, all of a sudden, your excitement kind of gets dwindled down. You're not so excited no more. And now, instead of not taking a phone call, you're like, oh, here's, you know, uh, and you're, you're trying to, you're reading the Bible, and you're watching TV, and you're playing games, and all this kind of stuff, and now you're adding other things to it. There's no more quiet time with God. It's been inundated by other things, and other things are taking its place, and then finally you get to this place. Today we're going to read from Psalms. Boring. on TV. Oh, reruns. Boring. Another boring night. Yeah? Oh God, yeah. I'll be there in a second. 
And then, so then you get to the place where it's not even exciting to you no more, and you're so dull. The enemy has you so blind that you, that you, uh, it's not even interesting to you no more. You're looking for a way out. You're looking for something else to do. Job 14, 7 through 9 says, For there is hope for a tree, if it's cut down, that it will sprout again, and its tender shoots will not cease. Though the roots have grown old in the earth, and the stump decays, listen to this, <laughs> beautiful, at the scent of water, it will bud and sprout again like new seed seedlings. See, you can get down, and you can get dull, but at the scent of the Holy Spirit, at the scent of God, at the scent of that fresh water that can come into your life, all of a sudden you can begin to bloom again. You don't have to stay dull. Just at the scent of God being around you, at the, at the smell of God, of Holy Spirit in your life, just Him touching you, just you being in one service can change your life. Today, just at the scent of the Holy Spirit smell in this room, not, not necessarily physically, but the, the smell of, hey, I can make it. I can be sharp again. I can do this again. At the, it says you can begin to have like new seedlings that you can grow, and the tender shoots will not cease, and they can continue on. If you decide not to give up and not to quit and not to stay dull, because I'll tell you, what will happen is, is if you come up here, Kevin, help me. If you don't, you'll sit there, and this looks all nice. There's Christians every day that, that look nice, that's got this little fancy little fuzz on here, and it's got stuff all in it, nice wood, it's real shiny, and it looks all good. You look, you're like, man, that's a legit little, 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 little axe, a little hatchet. It looks good, man. I bet it'll f*** you up. It's so pretty. But you see, I can sit here. Hold, uh, okay, let's see here. Let's see here. But see, I, I could cut, and you would think that it would just go. I could see I'm, I can't, it won't even, you know, a sharp one would have went in there and stuck, and I could have walked away from it, and it would just stay there, right? I can't, I, can't, I can't get it to stick because it's dull. There's a lot of, thank you, a lot of us walk around looking shiny. We look like we got it all together, but behind the scenes, we're dull. And we want everybody else to think we got it together, but it's time that we stop and admit, I lost it. I've lost my edge, God. I've lost it, and I lost it there. I know where I lost it. i got to go back, and I want to show you that I want to go back to my first love again. I want to do that again. If you can come now, please. So what am I going to do today to help you to get your first love again today? And to, to, to start your process of being sharp again? We're going to have communion. How much better can you sit down and, and, and sharpen your axe than sitting down and remembering Jesus, remembering how much you loved him, remembering, God, I'm dull, but you know what? I remember now in the word of God that, that you were on the cross and you were broken and you, and you, you on, on Facebook, you're welcome to go get you some, some juice and some bread. If you don't have any, you go get you some Coca-Cola and, and some light bread and we'll sanctify it and you'll be just as good. It's, it's about the symbol. It's not the bread and the water. It's not the juice and that. It's the symbolism of what it is. And as long as you in your heart are sincere about it, it's just as important. And if you have these, certainly get that. But it's not about that. Just sitting down, and, and I, I remember, God, that, that you went on the cross, and you were beaten, and you were broken, and you were chastised just for me so I could be saved, so I could be sharp. You became dull so I could be sharp. You gave your life so I could live. You were broken and bleeding. I, I remember back even looking at, at, at the, 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 the movie, God, of seeing the bloody mess you were. Thinking back about that can renew your strength and make you remember what you, where, you are, where you're at now. I want to always read this when I, when I start to do communion. Luke chapter 24, verse 30, 31. It says, when we break bread, it says, I'm sorry, and they sat down to eat. He broke the bread and blessed it. Then he broke it and gave it to them. Suddenly their eyes were open and they recognized him. I always pray that prayer because today for some of you, your eyes are going to be open when you take this prayer. Every communion, I want to say that, that, that it can open your eyes to who Jesus really is in your life. It will open your eyes to who Christ really, really is. And it can open your eyes about how dull your, your acts really is. Jesus, Jesus called himself the bread of life. It's because he's our nourishment. He's our sus substance. He satisfies us. It's not about the bread and the wine. It's about the blood and the body of Jesus. This is not a ritual. This is not a method. 
This is not nothing that we just do. At, at, at. The Bible says don't take this lightly. Because this is, this is a serious thing right now. This is not, so, oh, okay, well, I'll go down to get me a little juice. I'm kind of thirsty anyway. It's about time for lunch, so I'm going to give you some bread. No, this is a serious thing not to be taken lightly, the Word of God says. It's communion. It's not an obligation. It's a celebration. And what I want you to do, if you could come down in just a second, and you come down and split on both sides and get your, get your juice. If you take a juice, if you would take your, your forefinger and grab one piece of bread and bring it to you like that, rather than put your fingers on it, that would help everybody else that's around you. Do your best you can to do that. And if you would do that and go back and sit in your seat and just start, just start focusing on God and just start asking God to help sharpen you. If you, if you as, as he's playing, if you just come on down, just make us a line down the center and go down both sides. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. When you go back and say, keep, keep it talking down to a minimum, please, just, just focus on God for this next few minutes. Watch your step. Thank you, Jesus. God, we love you. We praise you. We honor you today, Father. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. You can eat aside as time. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Bless your name, Lord. Bless your name, Lord. God, we honor you today, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Matthew chapter 26, verses 26 to 29. It says, as they were eating, Jesus took the bread, and he blessed it. And then he broke it into pieces, and he gave it to the disciples, saying, take this and eat it. For this is my body. Just take a knee, please. And he took the cup, which was one, um, a cup of wine, and gave thanks to God for it. And he gave it to them and said, Each one of you drink of it, for this is my blood, which confirms the covenant between God and his people. It is poured out as a sacrifice to forgive the sins of many. Mark my words, I will not drink wine again until the day I drink it with you new, with you in my Father's kingdom. Would you take the drink and drink? Hallelujah. You just begin to worship God for a moment. And ask Him to sharpen you. Let Him know where you, where you, where you lost your axe sharpening your head at. Tell him it's your fault and repent for that. And ask him to sharpen you and thank him for what he's done for you. The word of God says, remember, remember me when you do this. Remember me. You take the words re and member, separate them, and you put them back together. You are remembering him. The body and the blood. You're taking the body and the blood that were separated at the cross. And you're putting them back in you and remembering them. You're putting the body and the blood back. You're putting his body back together inside. Symbolically. Dear Heavenly Father, I love you today. Forgive me, Father, for any time that I've ever 
Lord lost my sharpness as a pastor. I repent, Father, that's not my desire. I get busy, I get weak, I get tired. And I ask for forgiveness for leaving my first love and maybe at times, Lord, not remembering the basics. Lord, forgive me for the times that I let, let the hurt and pain in my life of people that have hurt me and it did me wrong, possibly, Father, Lord, that I allow that to possibly separate me at times from you instead of going to you. Lord, help me, Father, to always remember you and to always find time to receive you into my life again, to stay sharp, to stay on edge, to no matter how busy I get, no matter what happens, that I always find and make time for you. Forgive me, Lord. Thank you for what you did on the cross, God. Seeing in my mind the, the movie, The Passion of the Christ, and because it, it brings to visualization, Father, the, what you possibly went through and probably even worse than that, God. It breaks my heart and it reminds me of how much you love me. And it excites me, Father, of how much you love me. And it makes me want to serve you more. It makes me want to give even more. It wants me to make you even want to do any more. It wants me to make to keep make sure that my 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 hatchet, my my axe is sharp, God. So I'm always ready to serve you. I'm always ready to serve others. I'm always ready to serve the broken, the hurt, the guilty, the shame. I'm always ready to help and hurt help those who are even whole. Of just having a bad day. <coughs> God, help us as a church. God, help us as a church not to lose our edge. Help us as a church to never forget the outcast, the misfit. Help us never to forget the one who may have plenty of money but is miserable in their life without you. God, help us as a church never to get dull to where we turn someone away that doesn't walk or talk or act or smell like we do. Help us never to be dull to where we, we look at someone in this church, God, that we know that we love each other, but we allow the enemy to come in between us and we become to bicker and gossip and talk about one another. Help us, Lord, to, to those that are married, God, help us, Lord, to, to love and adore our spouses and not allow us to get dull, our marriage to get dull and, and find a place where we don't want to be. Help us, Lord, never to be dull with our kids and totally just fly off the handle. But help us to show love and compassion and help to keep them on the right path. Thank you for your spirit, Lord. Thank you for your son, God. Thank you, Father, for this message that we can learn from. We give you honor, we give you glory, and we give you praise. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Praise God. I want you to go home today and and think about where you're at with God. As I said, today's message is for Christians. Today's message is for us that are that live in the life.